how to fix an abnormal lumbar lordosis. When we talk about a lumbar lordosis, we're talking about curvatures in the spine. And one question that always comes up when I talk to patients is like, why does the spine have curves in the first place? And the curves are designed to make the spine stronger, deal with compressional forces that occur throughout the body. Um, the, spines has, the spine has curves in the neck, in the mid back, and in the low back, and it makes the spine more flexible and deal with, able to absorb, like a spring, absorb forces of compression and gravity over time. The spine has mainly has two different types of curvatures. It has something called a lordosis. And a lordosis is when the spine bends towards the front of the body, and it actually is the lordosis exists in the cervical spine and in the lumbar spine. We also have something called the kyphosis, and that's when the spine bends towards the back of the body, and that's when the that normally occurs in the thoracic spine and also the sacral area of the spine as well, or the, or the tailbone. These main areas of the spine are really trying to deal with the different sections. So these sections are normally dictated by that area. So cervical spine, again, having a lordosis, the thoracic spine having a kyphosis, and the lumbar spine having a lordosis. And these two, these, these curvatures work in harmony with each other that as one compresses and deals with the compressive forces, the others do as well. Now, these curvatures do have a normal healthy range. And there is a unhealthy range and there's an unhealthy range. So normally a healthy range for a cervical lordosis is between 20 and 40 degrees and between a lumbar lordosis is somewhere between 40 and 60 degrees. As long as these curvatures are within this normal range, we have a healthy lordosis. Um, however, if these curves uh, tend to go outside their normal range, either too small, meaning hy uh, hypolordosis, or too big, or too uh, excessive, it becomes a hyperlordosis. Hypolordosis or hyperlordosis can have a negative effect to the biomechanics and function of that area. And in the lumbar spine, the most common thing we tend to see is hyperlordosis um, it can happening in the lower spine. However, because of all the excessive sitting that we tend to see, we're tending to seeing hyperlordosis tend to happen um, more commonly as well these days. Now, there are some symptoms associated with hyperlordosis, and the, one of the most common things we tend to see is something called swayback. And this is where the abdomen tends to have this protruded and the, your buttocks has a protruded excessively back, and we're seeing this excessive um, sway back we tend to see. And this is where there's too much hyperlordosis. This hyperlordosis can affect nerve involvement into going into the legs. So we can see, feel like tingling sensation, electrolyte sensation throughout the lower body, weakness, and we can see also issues with bladder control. As patients have this hyperlordosis, they're also predisposed to something called an, an anterior spondylolisthesis. And an anterior spondylolisthesis is where one of the vertebrae of the, sp of the lumbar spine moves forward and relative to the other vertebra. Um, this can happen as compression forces are pushed down into the spine. You have an excess curve and it causes the spine to either to shift or it can actually cause it to fracture and move forward. Um, in addition, because of this hyperlordosis, we tend to see sore muscles because the body is struggling to support the, uh, the torso because the excess curvature is making these muscles work harder. And we also see difficulty with standing or sitting for long periods of time because of the abnormal biomechanics. Um, there's also something called a hypolordosis. A hyperlordosis is when the spine actually becomes decreased, the lordosis become decreased. And we can see a lot of the same symptoms. The only thing that's really different in a hypolordosis is what the, the spine has a has predisposed to something called a posterior spondylolisthesis or a retrolisthesis. And that's when the spine or when the vertebrae of the spine actually move back or move posterior relative to the bone above or below. And that can lead to nerve involvement of the spine. Now, there are different types of lumbar lordosis that could be affected in a negative way. Postural one is, is the, tends to be very common. This is normally caused from abnormal posture or chronic poor posture. And normally it's from normally sitting improperly. Um, traumatic lumbardosis is typically caused by a traumatic lumbar injury. And this is normally car accidents, slips and falls, sports injuries, something along those lines. Congenital lumbar lordosis is caused by an abnormality that occurs within the spine itself, and this is developed in utero, meaning the patient is born like this. They're born with some type of abnormality in the lumbar spine, which can lead to excessive or 
excessive lumbar lordosis or a decreased lumbar lordosis. Um, neuromuscular lumbar lordosis is caused by a presence of a larger neuromuscular condition, normally some kind of connective tissue disorder. It's causing contractures or, or laxities within the tissues. It can also be something that's affecting the lumbar spine itself like a tethered cord, I mean, the lumbar spinal cord itself like a tethered cord or something along those lines that can lead to this excessive or decreased lumbar lordosis. The first steps in dealing with lumbar lordosis is number one, determining its underlying cause. The majority of the time, it is structurally related. The most, uh, the, the most common cause is something happened to the alignment of the lumbar spine, causing it to shift in a negative way, either increasing or decreasing this lumbar lordosis, taking it out of its normal range. The vast minority of cases are neuromuscular or congenital. So in the majority of cases, you need to look at the structure in terms of what's going on. And Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive and customized treatment um, treatment programs that are driven by the cause, meaning look at the alignment, see what's causing the shifting to occur, and try to restore that normal alignment so therefore this, now these lordosis can fall into their normal and healthy range. And once they fall into that normal and healthy range, the body is more, um, more equipped to deal with compressional forces and they're much less prone to injury and pain. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.